the stars are shining above us Then I just want to be with you So you will notice also in my path that there's some strawberry crossing the road. Why did the strawberry cross the road? Because the clover didn't block it. But that's fine with me. <laughs> uh, there are strawberries under here as well. You can see. Look at the size of these leaves. They're doing really well under here. I did manage to get strawberries um, for a few weeks where I got eight or ten a day. They were a bit tart. Um, I think I was picking some of them early, but it's also the first real season of them here in the yard. And here's my attempt again to keep getting clover sewn into the path. I've tried a few times without watering because I'm not used to watering <laughs> in a food forest, but I realized that seeds need to germinate. So <laughs> I actually set up, if you can see this up here, there is a sprinkler right there sitting on top that I've zip tied to the top of my pergola and i'm well aware of the don't sprinkle and use the uh what's it called irrigation method but i'm lazy and i just run it for 10 minutes at 5 30 a.m every day to get these to sprout and i'm happy with this so i might be able to stop soon i just wanted to get them going so they would root and so that's pretty good that's the clover part and then you can see sometimes i get bonuses especially with the watering I'm getting mushrooms. A lot of them fell over, but you can see the little stems here. Uh, right there. Uh, I don't know what those ones are, but they seem to be pretty common. They've been popping up uh, every so often when it rains or the day after. And I'm waiting for my wine caps to come through, hopefully in the fall. I also just spotted these bad boys growing right beside my other kind of raspberries so this is one kind this is another uh, I know I have three kinds yellow red and black and I know the black ones are on the other side so I'll show them to you when I get there uh, and also the raspberries have crossed here I don't see any berries on that one yet so let's talk about kiwis I have a male and a female I believe this one is the female and so I've put up these two trellises and in hindsight I realized I probably only needed the trellis for the female since that's the one that's going to make fruit but I also didn't double check which is which so that's okay I can always run it across the full width so this is a west pointing view of the yard and this is the central island guild this is the almost clover path and so along the fence, again, we're doing a spalier. And we've had some good and bad things happen. So this is one of the ones from last year I got taken out. And this is suckering up from under the graft union. Oops, right here. So I've left it hoping that the rabbits will get that as a decoy while I protect the other ones. And let's see if we can find, oh, it might be on the other side. Let's go around. Here is the next one. So that first one was a pear, actually. This should also be a pear. Yeah, this is a pear. And this is one of the new ones from this year. And this is actually fascinating. I wonder if this is considered above or below the graft. It looks to be almost on the border. It's probably a little bit above. Anyways, I have this amount of growth, which is not much. And a lot of this was shaded because of at the comfrey, but also I cut it back leaving only two buds, I thought. So I can see obvious growth here on one and the other, and the idea was to do like a V. Uh, but there's more here and there. I think I might have just cut those off while I was cleaning up pre-video. <laughs> so this is south facing now. I'm at the back standing next to the espaliers, and you can see a gooseberry here and a second one right here. And it's actually 
There you go, you can see it here. Uh, it's funny because I didn't expect the pollinator plants to be gigantic. This is, so I'm almost six feet tall. This is almost six feet tall. <laughs> and these are pretty much six feet tall here. They're enormous. So I've been hunting for my fruit trees and bushes amongst the pollinators. And this, I have no idea. I protected this wondering if it was the return of the um, persimmon because the persimmon got taken down to the ground. It was a twig, which you can still see the original twig here. Actually, it wasn't to the ground. I lied. It's right there, maybe six inches off the ground. And some new growth started coming up that I didn't recognize as one of the other pollinators. So I'm hoping this is a persimmon. If it is, woohoo! One plant I don't have to replace. Bingo! Look at this! I think we got some blackberries. Unless this is a raspberry that's hiding. Nope, this is definitely blackberry. Alright, I'm excited because I like blackberries. And the raspberries, I just ate two that were super red. I should have recorded this. And they're very sweet, so I'm very excited for these again because they were sweet last year. Just thinking about how <laughs> last year I showed you guys a video with one yellow flower and now these are everywhere and I had so many of these and there's more of them over here and the bees love them other insects love them but I would say the most popular pollinator plant is this one here this one has been attracting a monarch butterfly uh, which hopefully I can get some footage for you of one uh, and man it is so cool and I watch it every day that I can every day that I see it usually comes around lunchtime this is not a monarch, but it's still fun. Look at that. Every day. Every day. Okay, here's the mulberry. This is a white mulberry that has no fruit on it yet. But I'm happy that it's actually this big. I would estimate four, four feet, four and a half feet now from ground level. Another thing that got taken up by the rabbits in the harsh winter and it's growing back very well. So I am very happy with this right now. No complaints. And then holy pollinators. Now this I think is one of those, you know, unintended consequences. If you look at these leaves from watering every morning to try to get the, uh, let's see if I can focus, try to get the clover to come in. And it looks like it's a bit of, I don't know, leaf mold or whatever you call it. Look, bees, you see bees? I see bees <laughs> and I'm so funny because uh, whenever the bees come too close to my ear or I hear them up close I run away <laughs> like a little kid but that's okay man they are going to town am I getting this can you see this oh yeah a bit of recap let's this is where we were walking along the back fence this is the other part of the path going through here and that would make this section the island guild this is the plum then that matches with the chum back there and the other tree which is kind of hilarious because it's dwarfed by the pollinator plants is this one here which is an apricot tree and then this is also supposed to be clover path I have cherry bush one and cherry bush two so these were actually covered with uh, aphids and ants earlier this season and they're all gone and I did nothing. Thank you ladybugs. I'd love to show you guys a ladybug if I can spot one. They seem to hide really well even though they are bright red. I saw one that was orange and it was cool and then I never saw it again. I hope it didn't get taken out by some kind of uh, aphid mafia. Let's see. This is my other pear tree in the middle. That is my, I would assume is gonna, gonna be my favorite. I've never tasted it, it's supposed to be ultra sweet. It is a dewdrop pear, ultra sweet and soft. And the apricot tree, or not apricot, nectarine, hasn't, I don't feel like it's gotten much taller, but I'm happy that it made it because it had some girdling. Let's see if we can see. It had some girdling, which is not showing right now. But in any case, oh man, these are nice leaves though. They are fancy. 
and hello, who are you? Always random visitors in the food forest. But yeah, holy pollinator is Batman.